Hello, my name is Dr. Perry Jones. I'm a general dentist practicing in Richmond, Virginia. I'm an associate professor in the oral maxillofacial surgery department at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also the director of continuing education and faculty development at the dental school in Virginia Commonwealth University. And I am here to give you some information about a very interesting case that we recently uh, finished and I'd like to be able to describe that case to you. We'll use a dedicated scannable abutment that comes from the Glidewell Company and we'll use the CAD CAM milled technology to be able to create both abutments and a final four unit bridge. The case is really unusual because it's really one of the first times that we've been able to carry technology from the standpoint of a scannable dedicated abutment to a final solution with a both zirconium abutments as well as a final four unit bridge. The bridge will be a Bruxer bridge. We've done many of those in our office, but we've never done one before where all of the technology was done modelless. Well, first let me introduce you to our patient. The patient is a 52 year old Hispanic male, apparently healthy, who sustained a traumatic injury and lost four of his front incisors. When I first met him, the implants in this case had already been placed, but we do happen to have a record of what happened as far as his surgical result. And let's talk about that. The patient had four incisors missing and he reported to our oral surgery clinic at MCV at the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Dentistry. And at that point, it was elected that we would try to restore his mouth with two implant fixtures and place a four unit bridge on those four fixtures after implant integration was successful. The patient had presented with actually a flipper, a acrylic four unit acrylic bridge replacing just his four front teeth and due to the nature of his anterior coupling and occlusion he reported that this prosthesis would periodically break and you can see in this first picture the two central incisors are in fact broken from the prosthesis. It carries a lingual flange and at in its original condition for anterior teeth attached to it. So what we decided to do at this point was to place, and this was done by the residents of our uh, Virginia Commonwealth University uh, moral surgery team, a full thickness flap was placed and two Nobel 4.3 by 13 millimeter regular platform implants were placed. Here you can see in this first picture is a verification picture of the angulation and depth of the placement of those implants and that certainly looks satisfactory. You can see they parallel the canines. In the next photo you can see we sutured him back together, placed five millimeter healing abutments and allowed the case to heal. Um, this took place over about a six month period of time. The patient returned, and this was the first time I saw the patient, returned to the clinic in anticipation of restoration of those implants. Uh, as verification that the implants were in fact integrated, here are some pictures that show the intraoral condition of his mouth, and you can see he presents as a healthy dentition, ready to be restored. That we need to check out the implants. First, a Panorex verified the position, the placement of the implants and we used a couple of tools. Here we use the Ostel ISQ device to be able to check the uh, integration and he came up with an ISQ number of 78 which is very good on the scale and we use a counter rotation torque wrench to be able to prove that he had no rotation of the implants and in fact verified a condition of about 35 newton centimeters. He had no rotation at 35 newton centimeters so we deemed the case to be integrated satisfactory such that we could place the permanent restorations. What we did next was we removed the five millimeter healing abutments and we placed a Glidewell purpose-made scannable abutment. Here you can see it's about 30, 13 millimeters in length. The kit is provided with a screw, a retention screw. So we took the healing abutment, put it in place in the patient's mouth, and we did a verification with a radiograph to be sure that the abutment was in fact properly seated on the implant fixture. And this is a picture that demonstrates the two scannable, purpose-made Glidewell abutments. Here they are in place. Now the next step was we would scan those. The tool that we used for scanning was the optical scanning device made by Cadent and it's called an iTero unit. It comes now with a new 
uh, software. It's labeled a 4.0 software, and the 4.0 software that we used is actually just being beta tested in my office. Um, this was actually one of the first cases that we did of a scannable abutment, especially a scannable abutment on the Nobel system. Um, Glidewell provides a library of different implant fixtures that can be um, used in the scanning process. Here, the Glidewell regular platform abutment in this picture, you can see, uh, shows a very nice tissue contour and no bleeding. It looks good. Here is what we see, and I'll follow, what you're going now to do is to see what are the virtual images in the steps that are used to be able to create first our all zirconium abutment. This is the image that comes from Cadent. This is the image that is the first image that Cadent will see. This image, once it is, they say, cleaned up or the scatter information is removed from the image, is sent to Glidewell. And this is the picture that Glidewell sees in their virtual representation. Again, you can see clearly the detail of the scannable abutments. Here's a close-up of the detail of the scannable abutments, and you can see the edges of the, uh, of the reproduction, how accurate the ag edges of the reproduction are of the uh, keyway of the uh, scannable abutment. Here's another shot of the same. Now, using some software, it's called CZ software that Glidewell uses, a mock-up was done, and using our CAD process of design in the lab, a plan was made for the shape of the zirconium abutments. And here you can see that in this anterior view. Let's take another look. Here is an occlusal view of those scannable abutments. And they are now in virtual reality on a computer screen in 3D. And here you can see the, the uh, cross-sectional view from a sagittal view. And actually it's interesting to see that we uh, actually are a little more labial with the implants than what we'd like to be, but we're going to compensate for that in the design process. It was of concern that we could in fact clear enough room to be able to allow a proper amount of labial porcelain to be able to create the four unit bridge. So we have designed all the all zirconium abutments and now what we're going to do is to try those in the mouth. And you can see in this next picture, this was a concern we had was we had to remove some of the labial for the purpose of being able to clear enough porcelain for the final prosthesis. The screw that goes in place to hold the zirconium abutment in place, the question was whether it would clear this labial reduction. Since the screw is not in the um, virtual representation, it took the reality of trying it in the mouth to discover whether or not this did or did not in fact clear. Remember this case was done modelless, so we went from scannable abutment, information to Cadent, information to Glidewell, this design done at Glidewell, now we have the actual abutments and we have the final restoration four unit bridge to place on top of the abutments. So we put this together and you can see in the mouth there was in fact a little slight blanching around the tissue but that's normal, no big deal. Here is a close-up shot. You can see how close it was to clear the head of this uh, retention screw in the zirconium abutment. Here's the other side. You can see they look very nice and seated perfectly against the uh, implant fixture. Here now is a close-up picture from the labial of the Bruxer trade name for the all zirconium bridge that Glidewell makes, Bruxer Bridge, that we're going to place over top of the zirconium abutments. And because we'd never done this before, I'd never delivered a case like this before, it was with a little trepidation that I thought how this is actually going to fit. Here is a lingual view. You can see the tissue area. Now, here's the bridge inserted over top of the zirconium abutments. If you look closely, you can see that we actually had to do a little bit of finessing to make the gingival areas contour properly, given the placement of the implants. Um, again, this was done at our resident program at Virginia Commonwealth University, and I think it turned out reasonably well. Um, this is the bridge in place at Tri-N, and here is the lingual view. When this patient went with the occlusal check, when we did the occlusal check, we discovered that there was a tight bite, um, anterior coupling we thought would might be challenging in this case, and there were a patient reported to us that there was absolutely, it felt perfect to him, and there really was no need he felt like to make an adjustment. But since the patient hadn't had front teeth in a while, he really didn't know how to evaluate that. So after doing a bite check with articulating paper, we in fact discovered it just looked perfect. 
I checked the patient again 48 hours later and again one week later to verify and there was no occlusal adjustment done for this case. It was, I would have to say, one of the most perfect fits we had for an anterior bridge. Here you can see the aesthetics are well satisfied. The mesial distal width proportion looks good. The smile line mates the incisal edge. The incisal edge proportion looks optimized. And I think you'll find it looks in this smile like a very nice restoration. Here is our patient, final smile, and you can see he is certainly very happy with the result that he had in this case. In summary, this case is a wonderful case to demonstrate the use of the Cadent Itero scanning technology to be able to scan a purpose-made abutment and to be able to create in the lab using our CAD CAM technology at the Glidewell lab to be able to create a all zirconium ceramic abutment that was delivered and a four unit all ceramic Bruxer bridge delivered to be able to seat on top of those abutments with I think a very satisfactory result. It gives a good example of where technology is and where we're going in the future in terms of our modelless restorative technology.